Father, we invite you at this time, Lord, to come and take over the time of sharing your word. Very important time. While you speak to your children, speak to me also, and speak to others who will watch this message somewhere else. And we pray that Samadina will also listen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Yes. Uh, this is the Sunday, the first Sunday in Lent. The month of February is fast, really running. And uh, I would say, and that it will come in the announcement, let's do something different this Lent season. I would want us to please, you know, we are in covenant with the Lord over whenever it's time for Holy Communion, we fast. And I'm praying to us again that during this Lent season, can we please fast on Saturday and Sunday? You can stop it at 12, just a time of prayer. And I'll post a Bible portion which we can read every week. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If you will do that, get your children to do it. Because what you pass over to your children is what they will pass over to their own children. Uh, America is looking the way it's looking today because it came to a time when our fathers in America were not passing things over to their children. And children are growing in emptiness and television and the cell phone became their teachers. It is not going to be our portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. When we read the book of Genesis, it gave us a picture of a covenant God went into with Noah. And that brought my message completely to speak about God as a covenant keeping God. God, the God we serve is a covenant making God and a covenant keeping God. And in covenants, God revealed himself. In covenants, God revealed himself. In fact, I can say that Bible is a covenant book. The Bible we read is a covenant book. What is covenant? Covenant is agreement between one person and the other. When we talk about covenant in the Bible, we are talking about agreement between God and his children. Praise the Lord. God loves to take us through covenant. Um, the Bible speaks about seven different covenants from Genesis to Revelation. Um, we have the Adamic Covenant, we have the Noahic Covenant, which we read today in Genesis chapter 9. We have the Abrahamic Covenant, Mosaic Covenant, Davidic Covenant, and the New Testament Covenant. In each of these covenants, you will see this, promises, terms for the covenant, blood, and a seal. In Adamic and the Noahic covenant, redemption was revealed. Revelation of plan for God's redemption came first and seen in Adamic and Noahic covenant. In Abrahamic and the Mosaic covenant, God manifested that redemption when he called Abraham and said, start going. In Davidic and the New Testament covenant, God consummated his, his uh, redemption plan when we see Jesus came and died on the cross and sealed our eternal life for those who will come to him. Eternal life is sure waiting. That is why Bible said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe in him, whatever you are, you have eternal life. Jesus sealed it. But the question is, would you come? Most people know the truth and they run from coming. Now, I will look back before I go to the covenant God had with Noah. I will look back to what happened before Noah. What happened before Noah happened in the Garden of Eden. That speaks about the Adamic covenant. 
uh, which happened in Genesis was made between God and Adam. The covenant of Adam consists of different directions or covenants. Adam was given dominion and authority over the earth and the animal kingdom. Mankind was to reproduce and inhabit the earth. Man was given dietary instructions therein. And man was also given the responsibility to keep the garden and maintain it and put it in order. So when you hear about environmentalists, people who are conscious of environment, it started from the Bible. God wanted Adam to keep the garden and maintain it and not to leave it carelessly. All these were positive commands. Also, in Adam's commands, we see a negative one, and that is part of the covenant. He says, Adam was told not to eat the tree of good and evil, and the penalty for breaking that covenant is death. And we all know that Adam broke it, and Adam died. And when Bible says death, that means, it doesn't mean physical death. It means you are distant from God. Any person who is living on this earth that is not following Jesus is already dead. The day we accept Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, we have life. So Adam died because he broke the covenant. And so when we go to the covenant of Noah, in Genesis 8 and 9, it reveals a covenant made with Noah after the flood. That covenant came after the flood. The covenant was to remain, was to remain until the earth has passed away. The covenant God made with Noah was to continue to exist until the earth passes away. In Genesis 8.22, it represents the ongoing covenant between God and all mankind. Man's responsibility is to, one of the covenants there was, man's responsibility was to populate the earth and subject the animal kingdom. The sacredness of human life, the penalty of murder was also revealed in that covenant. And that the earth will never again be destroyed by flood. In that covenant, the Bible says that God told Noah that the earth will not be destroyed again by fire, by, by flood. Finally, he gave a sign for that covenant. What is the sign? Rainbow. Rainbow. Amen. Rainbow. That was a promise to Noah. He says, and I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of flood. Neither shall there be more the flood to destroy the earth. You can find that in Genesis chapter 9, verse 11. Praise the Lord. So we jump into the covenant of Abraham. So if you agree with me, we are going to get into another covenant, at least during this Lenten season. So that on Saturday, we wait on the Lord and pray. On Sunday, we come here after prayer, we close it up, and we'll be looking at another Saturday and Sunday until the Lent goes. And so God also went into covenant with our father Abraham. The actual Abrahamic covenant can be found in Genesis chapter 1 to 3. But in Genesis 15, 18 to 21, God will bring about a great nation, speaks about bringing out a great nation which will come out of Abraham's seed and which will multiply exceedingly. God pledged to Abraham to, to make him a blessing to all the families of the earth. He will bless those who bless Abraham and curse those who curse him. That is why the present Israel today, many people don't know. If you curse that nation, God will come after you. Because it is a promise. He went into covenant with them. If you watch, there was a time there was a big fight and all the Arab nations wanted to take Israel by surprise and wipe them. They tried. 
was just that one nation was able to hold back Egypt, Iran, Iraq, uh, Syria, Jordan, just one country, little country, was able to hold them back and chase them back and even conquer some lands. It's not because they are so powerful, it's because God went into covenant with their father to curse any person that cursed them and to bless anybody that blesses them. He also promised that he would have many physical descendants, Genesis 13, 16, and that he would be the father of multitude of nations. That one can be extracted by the fact that through the lineage of Abraham, Jesus emerged. And today, because of Jesus, although we are not Jews, we are engrafted into that family of God. Praise the Lord. God also made a promise regarding the nation of Israel. In fact, one of the serious covenants that is causing trouble today in the world is the geographical boundaries of the Abrahamic covenant that are laid out in Genesis chapter 12, verse 7, chapter 13, verse 14 to 15, and chapter 15, verse 18 to 21. So God promised them a land. God is the potter. We are the clay. He promised them a land, a land in the Middle East. And uh, he told them, anytime you sin, I'm going to get you out of this land. <laughs> if you read the Bible, you notice that Israel has been removed from that land several times. Well, because it was a promised land, after they are removed, God has mercy on them, they come back. The first time they were removed was in the days of Nebuchadnezzar. Um, Asia conquered Babylon. Babylon was ruled by Nebuchadnezzar. A king called Dairos, one day, God put in his heart to say that all the Jews will go back to their land and they moved back. After that conquer, it was not the end. During the um, Roman Empire, they were again conquered and were scattered all over the world and they all ran away from that land. And each time they left that land, other people come to occupy. And that is the trouble we're having today. So when they come back, other people are occupying their land. And so after that, in 1948, they came back to that land. United Nations permitted them to come back, and they came back. And before they came, many people were there. And that is why they are not possessing all the lands they're supposed to possess. But one thing is obvious. God is faithful when you go into covenant with him. You can go back today and call your children together and say, let's go into a covenant. Myself and my family we went into a covenant that every other Saturday will be fasting and come here and pray and break it. Since we are learning about our Father being a covenant God, it will be useful that we think about getting into one type of covenant with him or the other. When we go to Mosaic Covenant, I'm trying to I'm just jumping there because it's one of them can take us real two, three hours to go through. The story in the Bible is the story of redemption generally. The mosaic reveals God's judgment and uh, the impossibility of person's ability to obey it. it. Reveals God's judgment and our inability to obey it. Uh, that is why today we are speaking of grace. In mosaic covenant is referred to believers today as old covenant, uh, but it's not old, it has been there. In the covenant, God promises to make Israel his chosen people to make them a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, unlike the previous covenants that had few requirements for both parties. In this mosaic covenant, there is a lot there. In short, it's almost for, from the whole Bible we read today. The mosaic covenant was much more detailed with laws, instructions, rituals, and details of the tabernacle to be built in the wilderness that would allow the people to make sacrifice while they are in their pilgrimage to the promised land. Through the Mosaic Covenant, we receive the Ten Commandments, 
its ideal with man's relationship with God. What is the sign of Mosaic covenant, Abrahamic covenant, please? Circumcision, right? Do we remember? Yeah. 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 And the sign of Mosaic covenant, do we remember? Sabbath. Sabbath. God wants them that every of them would do nothing on Sabbath day and come before him in worship. The purpose of covenant was not to grant salvation. I repeat, the purpose of covenant was not to grant salvation. For there is no salvation. Nothing can give us salvation except the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now let's go into the Davidic covenant. Very interesting one. David covenant can be found in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8 to 16. Um, it kind of amplified and brought out the seed that was mentioned in Abrahamic covenant. In Davidic covenant, it established David as the lineage of the rightful king of Israel and Judah, thereby extending the covenant of Abraham to David's lineage. Significantly, God promised David's lineage would last forever. A kingdom will never pass away and that it will be permanent. Of course, when we look today, we would wonder, uh, where is that thing God promised? Yes, there will be a time when someone from the lineage of David, which has already been established when you read the books of Matthew and Luke, that Jesus is from David's lineage, right? Are we right? So a time will come when Jesus will come back and sit in that throne again, confirming that what God has spoken about the lineage of David that kings will never be lacking in that lineage. The covenant is important element of Jesus as the Messiah. Jesus by his death and atonement created new covenant of faith in which the Gentiles could participate like I said earlier on through what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary we are engrafted in this covenant. So we are talking about the new covenant. Um, it was made by our Lord Jesus Christ with the 12 disciples who presented, represented first of all the house of Israel and secondly the body of Christ. The new covenant became the fulfillment of all precious covenants. I repeat, the new covenant was a fulfillment of all the covenants we have just made, have just said. Basically, Christ fulfilled his requirement and terms of every precious covenant from Adamic to Davidic. Christ is also the door that takes us to everlasting life. And that is why we say that he has fulfilled it. The moment we give our lives to Christ, it is a clear cut run to eternal life. Every covenant has four elements, consists, the covenants consist of four elements, like I already said, promises, terms, and the blood and seal. We know that when Jesus was going, he promised the Holy Spirit that will come. And we know that when the Holy Spirit came, he sealed the covenant of Jesus. That when we receive Jesus, we welcome the Holy Spirit to abide in us. And that is why Jesus said that those who worship his father will worship him in spirit and in truth. So God was doing everything and that is what we are seeing in First Peter. What did Jesus do? After taking care of those who are living, when he died, the Bible said he was alive in the spirit. Being alive in the spirit, he went to hell and released those who died in the days of Noah, who did not know God. Hallelujah. That was what he did. So he was out to get everything he can get. So while some people, so you know, when we understand the scripture very well, Jesus' dead was just the body suspended and he, he was alive in the spirit and went to Hades and liberated those who were in, in, in prisons. And that is why today, before Paradise was a part of hell. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Before, paradise was a part of hell. That was why Abraham, the, the, the rich man, do you remember the story? Was still have seen Abraham and asking him to send Lazarus. But today, after the resurrection of Christ, paradise was moved to a different location in heaven. And Bible confirms it. He said in Matthew 27, 52 to 53, and the graves were opened, and bodies of saints which slept arose, and came out of their graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. When Jesus Christ resurrected, many graves were opened. Those who died long ago came out and walked into the uh, holy city. And in Ephesians, we heard about it again. He says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascend mean? Except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions. He was, he who descended is the very one who ascended higher than heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So he took captives and led captives as many as were in that very old place called paradise, where the thief, where the, the rich man was asking Abraham, please, can you ask Lazarus to go and touch what I come and touch my lips? Those sin no longer exist after the resurrection of Christ. Jesus went to hell and removed all the believers that are there and sent them on high. Praise the Lord. I pray that as we travel Lent period, that God will reveal to us the need and the essence for us to be a covenant children who are desiring to be serious with God. Serious in terms of saying, Lord, I want to draw closer I want to be able to talk to you as an Abba Father. I want to do this. And when you go into covenant with God, God is always faithful to fulfill the condition you are giving him. Let us pray.